S S S, aka Skill Issue, is an alternate game mode that pits Rhodes Island versus Stronger and Stronger and Stronger and Stronger and Stronger. And stronger. <laughs> Stationary Security Service has been infiltrating my mind for the past two years, and now all the hatred that it has received from the community is in my bloodstream. But we're not here to talk about that, we're here to get good at SSS. This is part one of a three-part series on Stationary Security Service. Today we're talking about how to make good squads. In part two, I'll be analyzing Irene's forehead in excruciating detail, and part three will be a live commentary where I hold you at gunpoint until you level Astony. Now going into this video, you might have some opinions about SSS. However, there's a difference between hating SSS because you're good and understand where the game screws you, versus hating SSS because you're bad and don't know any better. I'm not trying to change this part, I'm trying to move you from here into here. So with that out of the way, let's begin with a phrase I hear all the time. Stationary security service is too random. Which is kinda true. But the point of good squad building is to minimize randomness. A squad like this, for example, is very inconsistent because it's not focused on doing anything in particular. It just has a bunch of six stars with no regard for synergy or strategy whatsoever. Now I'm sure many of you are familiar with the GigaChad Golden Glow setup. So tell me if this sounds familiar to you. To set up GigaChad Golden Glow, all you need is five snipers and Golden Glow. Pretty simple, right? So you get into game, trans for Lifeland, Penance, and Aya, and then you die. This is the first reason you're bad at SSS. You have commitment issues. Now I hope that doesn't hit too close to home, but the problem we encountered was that none of these operators help us set up GigaChad Golden Glow. So how do we fix this? Well, if we just replace this garbage with stuff that actually helps, it's much more likely that our GigaChad Golden Glow comes into play much earlier. Commitment is key. If you have a strategy in mind, then DO IT! You need to commit, because otherwise this trash is going to keep getting in the way and screwing you when you need it the least. But there's a problem with this. Who the f has 30 snipers raised? This is where our first secret source comes into play, which is to get lucky forehead. But the second secret source is supporters. You can think of supporters as a good dog who fetches things and dutifully brings them back to you. You don't have to put in any work, and you also have a cute dog. Similarly, a supporter like Angelina fetches things from your preparation zone and puts it into your deployment zone. You don't have to put in any work, and you also have a questionable belt fetish now. The great thing about supporters is that as soon as you transfer into them, you can immediately transfer again. And unlike your belt fetish adventures, speed is of the essence in stationary security service. When we transfer between these three operators, for example, we have to kill enemies in between them to get our transfer permits. But if we replace Penance with Angelina, this condition disappears entirely and the only thing that dies is our cringe. But some of you might be thinking, I don't even like dogs, so why don't I just cut out the middleman entirely and just do it myself? After all, I am a strong, independent doctor that doesn't need an immortal dustbin telling me what to do. Well, there's two problems with that. One is that without Angelina, you are cringe. But the second is that SSS forces you to add operators to your squad. Supporters aren't necessary. They are the best of the bad options. Someone like Penance is arguably a more useful operator, and depending on your taste, Harass brings you varying amounts of joy. But Angelina isn't better because she slows or she's based, it's that Angelina gets you closer to GigaChad Golden Glow, and she gets you there faster. But there's a problem with this. Angelina isn't free, and if you're dropping supporters like they're hot, then your DP will start to look more and more like your bank account. Now I hope that doesn't hit too close to home, but I'm sure that many of you have, um, let's say, expensive taste. So how do you, a Kyosten V fanboy, 
pay for your lavish indulgences. That's right. And this leads us to the third and final secret source, vanguards. Vanguards are insane in SSS because they do everything. They protect you, they're cheap, they pay off your crippling debt, their tactical equipment is ridiculous, they'll never run around, never desert you, and I am not biased whatsoever. Penance may be an expensive girlfriend at 36 DP, but Giga Chad Golden Glow with her entourage costs in the ballpark of 70 to 120 DP. This is where vanguards help out, because vanguards fund your questionable belt fetish and get you closer to Gigachad Golden Glow in the process. This is not even to mention that they are still vanguards who kill enemies and kill my attraction to real women. Stacking vanguards on top of each other also accelerates their DP generation until you have way more DP than you can handle. But don't worry about excessive DP, I'm sure you've already got your hands full with all of those belts. But there's a problem with this. Now we have a bunch of vanguards in our squad, and wasn't the very first thing I said to DO IT! Aren't we just replacing the trash in our squad with different trash? Well, kinda, but as the old saying goes, one pink cat's trash is another blue jellyfish's treasure. If we bring a strong melee operator such as, well, I don't know, Mizuki, we can let him ride on top of all of these vanguards, quite an enviable position. So now it just comes down to which one happens first. Do we get Giga Chad Golden Glow first, or does the joke I made in my last SSS video about Jelly Boy reach 0%? And this is the crux of building fantastic squads in SSS. Every operator must have a purpose. What is the purpose of Golden Glow? To deal big damage and give everyone the scariest haircut of their life. What is the purpose of Jessica? her sniper equipment and early cheap defense. What is the purpose of Tsukinogi? To be awful, but also to get you closer to your game winners faster. What is the purpose of Wildmane? To be fucking adorable. What is the purpose of Quora? To block this specific enemy and that's it. What is the purpose of Lapland? Well, if she doesn't have a purpose, you should remove her or commit to a different strategy that gives her a purpose. At the end of the day, being good at SSS comes down to assembling a squad that quickly and consistently sets up game-winning combos. This template of vanguards and supporters works for literally everything because they put the consistent in your disappointment factor. Yes, SSS has a meta, but if Arknights has proven anything, it's that anything is possible. It's just about how willing you are to put in the time to understand how it all works. When it comes to SSS at least, I'll leave you with this. Commit to a strategy and go hard on it. Play fast, finish faster, take out the trash so you can build trash. This has been part one. See you in part two where Irene repeatedly shoots me in the nuts because I can't stop talking about her forehead.